You're listening to 16 Artists, a conversation series with young creators finding their way in the world. My name is Raylan Yant. I'm a musician living in London, and I graduated from Harvard College in 2016. In this series, I talk to 16 classmates who inspire me about their creative paths since graduation and their visions for the future. You see, our five-year reunion went virtual, so I decided to make a podcast as a meaningful excuse for my classmates to reconnect. But I promise, these conversations are not just for the Harvard community. They're for anyone who wonders about how to balance work and life with their creative passion. Our hope is to demystify life in the arts and help reawaken your creative spirit. For our first episode, I'm honored to feature Rene Jean and Sumire Hirotsuru. Rene Jean is a London based animator and director. In her films, Rene explores issues of the body, nature, and sexuality all things beautiful, ugly, and squishy. Her short films have screened and won awards at festivals internationally, including the Toronto International Film Festival, South by Southwest, and the 2019 Jury Prize for Animated Short at Sundance. Sumire Hirotsuru is a violinist, writer, and social entrepreneur based in Tokyo. She has performed as a soloist at major venues in the US and Japan, including Carnegie Hall, the Kennedy Center, and the National Cherry Blossom Festival. She has also written bestseller books in Japan on self-management and organizes education programs for school children. Renee and Sumire are both powerhouse creators and kind, humble humans. I was excited to catch up with them and began our conversation by asking Renee about the trip she took to Japan after graduation. My parents are from China, and I sort of grew up going back, like visiting every five years or so, but I wanted to see a different part of Asia. And so, yeah, I ended up in Japan, and I, um, it was just, it was a great time, and I, I, I mean, I just, I didn't, I don't speak Japanese, and so I was just really lost and uh, confused, uh, which is kind of what the film that I ended up making, Renee Poptosis, is about. Um, and I went on this like long hike for two months from Tokyo to Kyoto through like a mountain trail and um, sort of met really friendly people and uh, I'd never camped or hiked before so I was kind of you know I was like really embracing the spirit of this tr this travel fellowship like trying to do something that felt uncomfortable for me um, and it was uncomfortable. It was raining a lot, and uh, it was there. You know, one day I looked down, and there were all these leeches uh, <gasps> crawling up my <laughs> legs. <laughs> um, yeah. So the film that I ended up making was kind of about this like changing relationship with my own body and with loneliness and um, with leeches. Um, it's kind of a mix of all all those things together. They say. About what in particular, we have no insight. But from her tears this world was created, and life as we knew it originated. Other, other people are a mystery to me, I think, so I'm, I'm trying to like... I guess understand or figure out myself through the through the films first, um, and so looking back on the films I've made, it's kind of a nice like diary of the emotions and and feelings that I was having at the time. And when I go back far enough, it feels like it starts to feel like they were made by like my thesis film Holden Kaka feels like it was made by a stranger. Now um, mm -hmm. it's really embarrassing. <laughs> so, but um, but yeah, it's it's nice. It's kind of nice to look back and cringe a little at who I used to be. Because mm. I came to Harvard with all these sort of 
you know, I was, I thought, well, I'm here, I should be studying something, uh, you know, I should be like, I should be a biologist, probably. Um, and so I was kind of at war with myself about that. And my freshman year, I think I was hanging out with the wrong people, like people who were, you were like, I was, you know, sort of painting in the common room and someone would be like, uh, you're painting on a Thursday. <gasps> <laughs> it was weird. I really remember oh. that. But then after that, once I was sort of in VES, uh, I think there's maybe like one or two animators a year. This um, is visual and environmental studies, right? Yeah, which is now called, I think, art, film, and visual studies. But so once I sort of found that community and other people were doing studio art or doing film or documentary, but it kind of felt like we were the same sort of, like, what are we, we, it feels strange to be doing this here, but we're all doing this, so it feels better, and we, it was a nice support family kind of feeling. I'm always curious about the creation process of animation or any other form as a musician, because whatever... I get it inspired because I'm not a composer, I'm a performer. There is a music that I have to play. So whatever emotion I have to express through the music. Mm -hmm. But in your case, you're creating like completely out of blue everything from your inspiration. And uh, do you feel like, I don't know, it's completely beyond my um, world as a musician. So it's just amazing to hear how life experience literally directly influence your art style. Um, yeah, this is not a question, but I get in impressed always. Oh, thank you. Sumita, can you talk a little bit about your um, path since graduation? Yeah, so after graduation, I got really inspired by playing with Sokuro Ensemble actually in my starting from my junior year. Before that, I felt like music is just self um, satisfactory. In a way, you just express yourself, period, done. And please, audience, listen to my music. But that's not what it is. And um, what the performance told me was there are so many different worlds beyond that experience you perform, but people share that experience together as a performer, as a listener. And there are so many emotions and things that you can convey in the form of music. It just happened to be music, but it doesn't have to be you know, music, but there are so many things that you want to convey to the society, to the people, um, and that realization that your music and outside world are connected was huge to me through that experience. Yeah, and, and that was the time when I decided that, oh, I, I, I can play the violin, which means maybe I can um, do something with this. I really wanted to go to a music school, so I went to Juilliard for a master's for two years and also I wanted to live in New York once in my life so that was a great um, decision I think. Um, yeah and then after that I wasn't feeling to go back to Japan because New York was such a great place for musicians to just experience any kinds of music so I decided to stay um, and yeah I was basically freelancing in New York and it was great because I also had an opportunity to write books in Japan at the same time so that was kind of like a two different worlds where I was living because in New York I was ba mainly playing violin and then in Japan I was writing books and I was doing lecture towards so that was like a different parts of me um, living in different parts of the world so that was a cool experience um, and I got to polish myself as a musician um, in New York by just playing with so many different musicians. And yes, I'm, I'm back in Japan because of COVID, but 
now I really miss New York as an environment where I just experience, experiment many different music genres because um, of course in Japan there are only Japanese people、um, to play with which is great too but also I realize how、um, inspired I, I was always in New York from just Just playing or like having a jam session for YouTube or something.、Um, yeah, that was a really fun experience. So, it, my time in New York for four years definitely、uh, made myself as what I am now. So, Renee, back to connecting these dots. I can connect、um, pretty well, I think, to Sumire's experience because I, I also sort of had this turning point working with Silk Road Ensemble, deciding, like, oh my gosh, being an artist is an option. <laughs> What was that process like for you?、Um, yeah, from, from that experience of being in VES and then the traveling fellowship, and then what? I guess going all the way back, I'd always wanted to make movies, but I didn't like talking to people and I liked drawing. So that's how animation, that's how I came to animation because I could make movies like alone at my desk in my bedroom.、Um, but then, and that's sort of the way that I made Rene Poptosis in Japan was like very,、uh, like very internal and very introspective,、um, which really worked for me. And I got, I think I got too comfortable in that. And I kind of wanted to challenge myself in another way,、uh, which was to make films with other people. And I got a big push, a big kick in the butt from Ruth Lingford, who was my professor at VES. And she is British and she teaches also at the National Film and Television School, which is in the UK. And there,、um, it's sort of. Everybody, yeah, it's, they really encourage collaboration. So there's, you get a producer, a sound designer, a composer, a production designer, a cinematographer, and you, you have to work together. And so this was very unnatural for me、uh, to suddenly be directing like 50 people. But I was calling myself a director before, but I wasn't really, I was just directing myself mostly. So it felt like a, a good next step. So then I went to, the, I, then, then I went to grad school. And made a film here called O Black Hole. And as afraid as I was of collaboration, it turned out to be、um, just really great and really fun. And I think it, so O Black Hole is, this, is a big musical space opera and just something I could have never made on my own.、Um, even, like working with my composer, Harry Brokenshaw, who's this mad genius who sounds like Donna Radcliffe and is really. Uh, stressed out, <laughs> but、uh, like somehow just has, the, he's like, he, yeah, he's, he's a genius.、Um, and I just, I think at 4 a.m., when you're not, when you're in a room with like four or five other people and you're all stressed out about the same thing, it's much more enjoyable than being stressed out alone. That's kind of what I learned.、Um, so, yeah, that's, that's where.、Um, That's where I ended up. And then afterwards, I'm now I'm in London. And、um, I think the moment for me realizing、oh, being an artist is an option, I guess it was、uh, this is kind of boring, but I just I started freelancing after I graduated. Because I'd had a very, you know, I went from college to like fellowship to、um, grad school. And now suddenly I was in the real world, which is scary. But、um, being like paid to animate was a really. Sort of big moment for me the first time、um, that it kind of made me realize oh, like, I, yeah, I can make, I knew I, I, I could make films, but now, oh, I can actually sort of be a productive member of society、um, making adverts, which is not、um, a great message, but you know, it's, it's I guess it's reality、um, and a way to keep making my own, my own work. Which is ultimately what I guess what, I, what we all want to do. It's making stuff that's fulfilling and、um, 
a way of connecting to other people. Have you ever wondered how a black hole is born? What was it like from being in an environment where someone asks you why you're painting on that Thursday to uh, an environment where everyone is an artist and kind of um, trying for the same objective or goals? But yeah, it was in some ways it was great. And in some ways it was like uh, a bit of a, a shock because I guess I quite liked being in an environment at Harvard where everyone's doing different things and my roommates are, my roommates are, uh, you know, studying nuclear physics and, and like, it's kind of, that cross-contamination is really great. And suddenly I was in, in an environment where all my friends are animators, which is great, and we're all kind of the same kind of person, <laughs> uh, which is a bit <laughs> strange. Um, but yeah, I did. I missed the sort of that like strange bubble of people all really focused on their thing and really good at their thing, yeah. but all doing different things. Um, yeah, how about how about you? Yeah, definitely the same. I really missed the whole studying session where everyone's just like studying different things, but together on the same table. I think it was really inspiring to hear. Um, things from different friends uh, about their research topics or what their pieces are on. Pieces. I haven't heard that, that word in a while. I wonder if they still use um, that term. I know. I think it'll, they'll be using that term forever. Yeah. <laughs> it's pro- problem sets for anyone who doesn't know. In case it has died out. Yeah. <laughs> TBT. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about this kind of psychological shift that I feel like all of us sort of had to make where in Harvard we're kind of taught to find a ladder to climb or that we need external structure in order to have a career. And one of the really hard things about making the leap to pursue a career in the arts is the instability, the lack of structure. I'm curious about how you managed that change to enter an environment where you ha- you had to be more self-directed. I feel like a lot of people will be interested in this this question because that's what's stopping a lot of people from pursuing their creative passions. It's like, I don't know how I'm going to make money, you know, like how I'm going to make a living. Um, so how did you find that that courage or that process? Um, I, uh, that sort of adjustment was not, was not so easy for me. I I cried for a few months and, uh, just panicked. And then eventually, um, because I graduated from film school in March 2020, or February 2020, and then March 2020, the, you know, everything shut down. So it wasn't, it wasn't great timing, uh, which is, (laughs) so I can sort of, I couldn't like, I'm blaming that for my... Um, that's so real though last month yeah I mean for for everyone and for people still at school for people who left school yeah it was just a yeah bad it's bad timing all around um but I think then I realized but it was it was a good sort of it's it's something I think I had to go through to realize and to think about like what is actually the most important thing in my career for me and I realized what it is is making the next film, making, like, finding a way to make my next film and Mm. sort of directing my energies around that and also, of course, finding ways to make money to to pay the rent, to, to, like, be able to do that. Um, I think for me, too, um, I was always just aiming for the next concert. I have to practice, I have to rehearse with people. And then once I you know, go through that process. I have a big concert and then, okay, I have to prepare for the next concert. That was like completely the drive. But also at the same time, in my case, it's a little bit unique maybe because I also had another career in Japan. My life in the U.S. was kind of like a 
dream world because at the beginning I had no idea that Harvard existed <laughs> like it was actual school and then I came to Harvard and then went to Juilliard and that was still kind of in a dream because that was, those schools were kind of dream schools for me when I was in Japan and I was living in that floating world and now now that I'm I'm here in Japan and I have because I'm physically not in New York I have no music job in the states but I have a great um I have great opportunities here and it, starting in April I'm actually teaching at two universities and I'm doing some like commentary commentator is, is that <gasps> in, uh, on like what a like on job, like, TV on like a mor morning show <gasps> yeah so I've done that three times it's like a, a once per month thing so I've started in January and I've been doing that but it's so hard to <laughs> just say things in like a minute mm. <laughs> like you have to come in on very very difficult news in a minute and you cannot you know um support with your background or anything or context you just have to be really, really clear, and you have no oh. um, what is it, script beforehand. You only are given the news list, what's oh going to be on the news for that two hours from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. So <laughs> it's a really difficult job. Um, you might get um, beaten on Twitter. It's very, very <laughs> possible. Have you been... Have you been? Not yet. Okay, good. <laughs> Nobody come for Sweden. No one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh it's a scary God. part. <laughs> mm. But yeah, it, I'm learning so much from that opportunity. It's just, it's not, because everyone is not thinking like you do. Mm -hmm. And you cannot support yourself afterwards once you say it you just mm -hmm. have the one minute whoa yeah and you have to take the position whoa so. that sounds really hard and really that's cool terrifying. <laughs> that's so terrifying yeah can, <laughs> can i say how i've been because i've been sort of following your i mean like amazing career on like social media and stuff how did how did the books and and these these commentator jobs like start really? so these all of these came from my website contact form. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so just have a website, please. <laughs> All the yeah. artists mm -hmm. in the world. <laughs> I think what's beautiful, you know, hearing both of your stories is this reckoning with the uncertainty of an unpredictable world. And Renee, in your case, just focusing on making the next film, you know, I think that's such a beautiful goal or, or core value because it focuses things such that you make it work. You make it work for whatever the next film is, and then life falls into place. And Sumide, you've been so open to different kinds of work or careers kind of coming into your life and allowing yourself to step outside what can often be a very specialized field of being a classical musician so that you're also an author and you're also a commentator. And that, that requires a level of adaptability and um, openness that sometimes, you know, we are, at least for me, like, I feel like I was trained against um, growing up, you know, we're, we're sort of taught like to have a long term career plan and have everything planned out and know what's going to happen and take these steps. And I actually think even in other fields, the world is, is becoming less and less predictable. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's, right. it's like, with so many of the changes happening culturally and also technologically, you really don't know what your field, your career, your world is going to look like in 10 years. So what do you feel like is the skill or the 
um, attitude that you've had to grow in order to deal with that unpredictability? Is it creativity? Is it um, like <laughs> I think it was just, <laughs> just a lack of long-term planning. <laughs> yeah, like letting go of long-term planning? Yeah. 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 I'm really not good at long-term planning. And especially now these days, you can, yeah, you can never imagine what's going to happen tomorrow. So I tend not to make a long-term plan. And I just don't want to, um, how to say, like cling to my long-term goal and miss some opportunities that are here already. So, and sometimes, of course, people say like, oh, if you're a violinist, you just play music and just be creative because you're, you know, using so many outlets that you're letting go your art ability or, you know, things like that. But it's a becoming like a different generation and I think in our generation we can be um, creative in many ways and we can have multiple outlets as well. That creativity extends beyond mm -hmm. your specific form. Right. It's something that applies to anything to you do because as an artist you have a perspective I think it's beautiful the way you, you responded by saying it's almost the lack of a skill rather than a skill itself. It's the lack of the long-term planning skill. And I really believe so. Opens up. <laughs> Renee? I guess it's something I've worked out. Is it's okay to be disappointed about something that you've missed out on, but only for... But only... Maybe only cry for like a day or two and then you know like <laughs> move on to the to the next thing or move on to the next um try something else or or um yeah I guess it's just not I don't know it sounds so resilience sounds really lame but something like that but less um uh but better. Do you have yeah. what's what's the word? <laughs> well, I think what Less it is, annoying. it's yeah. I, I think what it, you know, you're you're kind of talking about not clinging to the past. Mm, yeah. And Sumire is talking about not clinging to the future. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Don't cling, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we say in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well this commentary job has taught me a lot and and also realized that being in Japan where most people are Japanese it's really hard to be aware of many um, issues or any news outside of the country well as a commentator you have to discuss um, the news that's given to me on that day and it's not it's not like okay we have to be um picking up these news because it's more important than these and i feel like there is a need for more um i don't know it's hard to say um like uh, be being back in japan for the first time in eight years I feel a lot of like reverse culture shock and there are many things that um, are not publicly discussed or that are not supposed to be uh, publicly discussed and um, I feel like it's my role to bring in different perspectives but at the same time I don't want to be like oh in the states it this is the norm so we have to be doing this. It's hard to you know take the balance and you have to be respectful to other culture because it's not like okay in Europe this is normal but in the states and mm -hmm. then like people kind of tend to generalize oh outside of this country people tend to do that or like in Asia 
people tend to do that, but it's you can not ne never generalize those things um, in this world right now. So it's really hard to talk about those things on news, and that's what I've been learning a lot um, from this job. Yeah, but I I think there are many barriers or walls that I want to break specifically in this country while I'm here um, about like taboos or discussions or news and of course it's not like I have all new right perspectives but at the same time someone has to do it and I mean sometimes I even feel a little um, gap between my like family members who have been in Japan for um, their life and me who had spent some years in the States or outside of Japan but that's natural and it's I think it's my role to tell people to be just open to things and absorb as much as they can and it's not my job to just push whatever perspectives that I bring in from anywhere and it's not the right thing to pressure and I cannot say like oh this is the right thing so do it but um, I think I can give some opportunities for people to oh, be aware of what is happening outside and they can judge themselves what they should believe in and um, what they have to be aware of yeah absolutely you know, it's this openness that we were talking about. Um, maybe not just not clinging to the past and not clinging to the future, but also not clinging to um, a worldview that doesn't change. If you had to give a piece of advice to yourself five years ago when you graduated from college, what would that be? Hmm. I think when I graduated, I was so, I was, I felt so much grief about what I was leaving behind and so much fear about what was coming. But I think, and it was, it was a great, it was an amazing four years. Um, but I think the advice I would give myself is, you know, the next four years will also be amazing and full of new challenges, new people, new new things to, um, new experiences. So don't be too, don't be too sad about leaving. Don't be too afraid of what's coming next. That was beautiful. Mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Wow. Oh, God. Um, I think five years ago, I wasn't sure if the decision to pursue a musician path was the right choice for me. But, but apparently I didn't have to worry about it at that time because I was still just focusing on what I could do at that time to go to the music school and do my best and get a master's. So, and I, and now that I look back, I didn't, I really didn't have to worry about it because there are so many fun things that come after you um, graduate. And it's not like you're missing anything behind, but you are looking at so many exciting opportunities and people to meet. So, get more excited about the future mm. is the advice yes. and be yourself I guess um, just pursue whatever you think is the right thing um, at each any given moment gorgeous that's ah. great <laughs> so great yeah get excited about the future mm -hmm. have hope <laughs> have hope Life goes on. <laughs> um, Are you guys vaccinated yet? 
Not yet. No. <laughs> That's so morbid. Life goes on. Mm, but are but are you vaccinated? Yet? <laughs> I was just wondering. <laughs> Um, I know it's because you want us to all hang out. I just want to hang out. Yeah. 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 You can learn more about Renee Jean and Sumire Hirotsuru at 16artists.com. The music and soundscapes you heard in this episode come from Yours Truly, the films Renee Poptosis and O oh Black Hole, and Sumire's performances of the Japanese folk song Furusato and a Bach Partita. More detailed credits can be found in the YouTube video description. New episodes of 16 Artists come out on Fridays on the Harvard Arts YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash user slash Harvard Arts. The episodes appear on iTunes and everywhere you listen to podcasts a few days after they premiere on YouTube. On Saturday, May 1st, we're premiering a special performance collage from our featured artists, so make sure to subscribe to the Harvard Arts YouTube channel and ring the bell in order not to miss this. This series is supported by the Office for the Arts at Harvard and the Harvard Alumni Association. To stay up to date, you can follow the Office for the Arts at Harvard underscore arts on Instagram and Harvard Arts on Twitter. This is a brand new series, so I'd love to hear any feedback you have. Feel free to get in touch with me directly on Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn at R-E-Y-L-X-N. My name is Raylan Yant. Thanks for listening to 16 Artists. <laughs>